Hi Horse Racing Enthusiasts, this is John. Welcome to the channel. I know I know it's uh, been uh, several uh, weeks since uh, our last video, um, but we're getting down to it right now. Um, the Kentucky Derby is a week from this Saturday, and uh, we're right in the thick of it. Uh, the horses are, um, I think our field is pretty much solidified. We could have a couple drop out, a couple come in, uh, but uh, we basically have it here. Now, although we haven't had a run up of videos, like we did last year. It's not because uh, I haven't been doing the work and haven't been doing analyzing this. Really just, um, you know, the, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, some of you know, I finished the program at the University of Louisville uh, to help uh, substantiate my horse racing credentials. So um, I'm pretty excited by that. And uh, really, really excited about this year's uh, Kentucky Derby. Um, I've gone through, at this point, I've gone through and looked at all of the uh, prep races. I have looked at um, all of the uh, past performances, all of the races that uh, the, the participants, uh, the would-be participants um, have, um, have done. And uh, it feels like, um, it, it feels like fierceness is the horse to beat, right? Um, the problem is, is that, that this, it, this, this horse runs its race which is a big question mark, which I'll get into now, um, this horse wins hands down, right? However, this horse is, if you look at the history of this horse, it's, it's kind of an on-off, on-off, on-off kind of, um, you know, uh, performance. And, you know, guess what? This Kentucky Derby is uh, is falling on and off. Now, I don't know if we can go by that. Um, the Derby is a difficult race, uh, even for the best horses. Uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of horses there, a lot of pushing, a lot of grabbing, a lot of uh, you know, close congestion kind of thing. And fierceness is shown uh, to be a great horse if he gets his race, if he gets on the lead, he's able to control the pace, and um, he just wins wins by 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 lengths basically. Um, the question becomes. Yeah, I think he's fast enough to get there, but will because of congestion, will he not be able to, to, to get there? And this throws a big question mark into the whole race. So, um, so anyhow, um, I think it's going to be. I say all that as a prep uh, uh, for that. This is going to be a, a challenging race, and you know what? What that means? It could be. It could be a money making race. So, um, uh, sorry, we just had a motorcycle go by here. Um, so. Uh, Saturday, the post positions will be drawn, and to a great extent, you know, we know if you get the first hole or you get the last. I mean, this depending on your horse's strategy and, and, and or, uh, or or their what their sort of go-to racing form is. Um, the, the post could be a good, you know, the number one post could be good, or you know, it could be most likely it's bad. Uh, no one's won from the one in a long while, so I think that we need to sort of wait till Saturday for our final things, but. I have some thoughts that I wanted to go through, um, and um, uh, so we've looked at all of the races, prep races, looked at the PPs, I've broken down something new I did this year, a little bit different than last year where I sent it around. This year I took nine criteria that I think are going to lead to, um, you know, lead to a successful uh, derby and uh, for, for a horse, and, um, and I've taken those criteria kind of split them up and uh, given them points and gone into each of the horses and, and, and broken down. This is basically my uh, of developing sort of a system here. Uh, we'll see if it works. Um, I think intuitively we do these kind of systems anyhow in our head. I'm just formalizing it. So what I like to look at is the sire, the dame sire, the dam sire, the trainer, the jock, the class, um, the type of races that it's won in the past. So Grade one, this is a grade one race. If the, the horse has won grade ones before, this it's, it's run against the best competition and it should be weighted heavily uh, towards that. If it's only won a maiden claimer or a maiden race, um, you know, you have to evaluate that. Uh, style, style is definitely that. Is it a speed horse? Is it a, is it a closer? Is it a stalker? Uh, those are important because I, as you know, as I like to break down races, I first like to see who is the speed of this race? Who's the speed? Uh, that's the first question we have to ask. And can they get, can they get the lead, and they, can they control the race? And that's that's in essence the whole the whole thing. I think we have enough speed in this race right now 
off the top of my head. Uh, fierceness, right? Obviously. Uh, door knock. Um, um, uh, names is escaping me right now. But door knock. We got door knock. We have um, track phantom, I think is another key one. There's a way I look at it, there's about five horses that like to run in the speed. I think that's going to be enough to give, to make it an honest pace. And what does that mean? Well, assuming that fierceness doesn't get the lead and doesn't control it and doesn't get the race the way that he wants it, which is maybe a broad assumption, um, I think this race opens up to potentially a stalker or even a closer. And we have a lot of those in mind. And uh, over the next couple of videos, over the next week and a half, we'll, we'll go through some of those. So, um, I've broken down the horses right now um, to, um, so, with, in guiding that system, I've gone ahead and broken down the horses. I think I've narrowed it down to eight that I really like. There's one horse in here, and there's no numbers yet, so forgive me, but it's Endlessly. Look at Endlessly, and I, I just hate to scratch, put a line through this horse, just because its pedigree is so nice. It looks so good. Um, it's done, I think it's won all of its races except for one, and it came in second that race. It's run most of its races on turf because its pedigree is crazy turf. It screams turf. This is this horse is probably going to be a turf champion. Um, I suspect um, I'm going to scratch, I'm, I'm going to put a line through it. I'm not going to bet on this horse endlessly, but look for that horse to come in some of the, the, the turf races coming up down the line. Um, you know, it's a grandsire, is a. Uh, um, um, its grandsire is um, Kitten's Joy, and Oscar Performance is the sire. I, I just love Oscar Performance as well. And uh, it just it has solid figures. It looks like it's built for distance. Um, it's made a good amount of money already this year, so look for him later. So I, I've taken some horses and I've just kind of put a line through them already. Uh, I've also done the same to West Saratoga. Um, I've also... Um, there's, there's a number of them. I don't need to go through those. Let's let's focus in on um, let's focus in on who, who who we like, who are the top um, horses of the eight that I've sort of looked at. So fierceness, Sierra Leone, catching freedom. We'll get into catching freedom in a, se a second. Mystic Dan, just a touch. Anna Marie, stronghold, and I think stronghold has kind of a turf pedigree as well. So. Um, I'm, that might be my next line through. And then I have resilience here. Resilience might be my next line through. So those are the horses that I'm keying on right now. And I'll, get, I'll eventually get it down to five. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but let's talk about catching freedom for a second. I, assuming that uh, fierceness doesn't get his race, assuming that, um, you know, has difficulty or doesn't get the lead and is challenged, we're looking for a closer. I really like catching freedom. What he did in the uh, LA Derby coming from last to first might be difficult in this in the Kentucky Derby because of so many horses, but it was actually pretty remarkable. It has a strong pedigree uh, with uh, Tappet being the grand side, I think, Constitution. Um, so, so you, you know, you feel like he's going to be able to get the distance. The longer, the better, in essence. So, um, I really like that horse. Now, we look at this a little bit and let's drill into something else before before we sort of cut it off today and come back with more elaborate sort of videos in, in the near future uh, next couple of days in that same race okay uh, one thing I want to say is Catching Freedom hasn't run since that end of March race at um, Fairgrounds Louisiana Derby and it was quite a race now the reason why is, is the trainer's decision you know why cram in another race that's gonna take a little out of the horse Excuse me. Let's train him up to the race. Um, and this is the type of skill set the trainer has. This is his uh, strategy. So uh, you know we have to sort of go with him. Now, the second place horse. I want. I challenge y'all to go out and watch that race. Uh, go to Horse Racing Nation in the first column, Kentucky Derby. You can see uh, prep race race replays. Um, go to the Louisiana Derby, LA Derby. And, and look at that race, watch that race, watch how that ends. I, I feel like this is, the Kentucky Derby is gonna be a similar race where I think closers are gonna factor into this thing. Uh, Catching Freedom came down from way outside, but right behind him, one length behind him, and almost a similar trip was Anna Marie. Anna Marie, and so Catching Freedom is probably gonna be uh, four to five, 
probably third favorite, but four or five to one in my eyes. Um, Anna Marie should probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 14. And Anna Marie, check, check out Anna Marie. I think given a little more distance, you watch that race, given a little more distance, Anna Marie would have even, I think would have caught catching freedom. Anna Marie, um, um, again, has also not run since the Louisiana Derby. Right, it's an honor code uh, with a smart strike um, um, mare as the dame, Dan, and um, ran a 96 speed figure. So you know, you look at if it's going to improve, which it has to improve, uh, it's going to be in the probably early, low hundreds. Um, if Fierceness doesn't, you know, do a 110 like he's done before or 105, uh, Anne Marie could be there. And uh, another story that I really like out of Anne Marie is the jockey. Um, Beckman is the trainer, but the jockey in the LA Derby was uh, Ben Curtis. And never you uh, seen anything on Ben Curtis? I'll try to put in the link here um, a YouTube video on Ben Curtis because Ben Curtis was a jockey. He's been a jockey all around the world, about 34 years old, I think. Uh, last uh, out of England, running a lot of major races. He decided to come in the fall, in November, down to fairgrounds. And I heard about him right right from the get go, and I was watching him. He's a good horse. He's a good jock. And he got a ride in that LA Derby on Anna Marie. He did well, and you know, hats off to Beckman who, who who's um, gone ahead and put him in the Derby. So you'll see um, uh, the Irish um, uh, jockey um, Ben uh, Ben Curtis, uh, and uh, that video was really really nice. It makes you want to root for him right away, uh, and uh, he takes his job seriously. He's already researched the pedigrees. It's a, it's a, just a fascinating video. So. Going into it, I'm sort of at a dilemma because I've had my eyes on, uh, I'll say about one really long shot in a second, but on, um, uh, I've had my eyes on Anne Marie because of that catching, and, and catching freedom because of those, uh, the performance in the LA Derby, and that each horse hasn't run since then, and I, I kind of like that strategy for right now. So, um, just before we stop today, uh, and we'll have more elaborate videos over the next, you know, few days. Um, I wanted to call your attention to another horse and it kind of uh, that I've been watching out of the corner of my eye as well. This horse ran at the uh, ran in the, uh, the Tampa Bay Derby, and, and I kind of liked him at the Tampa Bay Derby. Uh, admittedly, the Tampa Bay Derby was probably uh, the worst of the prep races out there, uh, at least from from a standpoint of you know speed and the horses coming out of it. Are they, do they have a chance to win in the Derby? Um, Grand Mo the first came in third in the Tampa Bay Derby, um, and he came in third in the Grade One Florida Derby. And again, I guess you know he was 15 lengths out of the lead. Fierceness took control of that. Um, but um, the reason I, I kind of have an eye on Grand Mo is that he had, again he has the closing, um, um, he has the closing sort of uh, style. Uncle Mo is his sire by Giant Causeway. Under, well, Giant Causeway is the the um, is the grand sire, so uh, he's the sire of the dam, and uh, that's a that seems to me to be a pretty good pedigree. And this horse seems to be turning it on. Uh, he closed well in, in each. He's progressed in each race, and uh, you know there's going to be a little something in me that's going to be rooting for him. Now, one other thing: when I was down at the Holy Bull down at Gulfstream, I spoke with. Uh, his trainer, Bob Oza. And, uh, you know, I happened to see him standing there. He was re wearing a Grand Mo hat, so I asked him a little bit about it. And it was just uh, after the finish line. And uh, we chatted for about 15 minutes, and he was telling me that he, he thought this horse had a real potential. And I, I guess it's a trainer's job to always say your horse has real potential. But uh, I, since then, I've kind of, you know, been keeping an eye on him. But um, right now, I don't really, I don't really, I don't really see he has a very strong chance, but if we if I see those odds, you know, floating up in the in the uh, you know, 60, 70, 80 to one, uh, it may be worth putting ten bucks on in my mind. So, at any rate, there we go. Uh, that's the the first video for the Derby uh, Derby production here. Fastness, Sierra Leone, Catching Freedom, and if Catching Freedom can do it, why can't Anne Marie? And Anne Marie, I think, is going to be my long shot bet. So, uh, again, long way to go still. We got about a week and a half, but uh, 
get your get your uh, um, your past performances on Saturday or Sunday. Start kicking this around. And um, any questions, any comments, uh, put them in the um, in the comment section. And if you like this video, share it with somebody, and like it, and share it with somebody. Um, and uh, more to come. All right, horse racing enthusiasts, let's go get them. Talk to you soon. Bye.